A result that Arsenal fans will be delighted with after, of course, they beat Brighton earlier today. It means they remain top of the table, one clear of Liverpool. Aston Villa coming from behind to get the victory, which puts them on 38 points as well. But let's... We, all had a, we all had a draw, didn't we? Well, Frank well, Lebeuf yeah, did. Uh, no, no, he, who's he? He's that was been, a tough game. He's been, <laughs> th this was rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was... It was frustrating, as, as well Well, it was. certainly from a Liverpool perspective. Oh, just my as a, goodness. Yeah. Talk about frustrating. You've got to give credit to United. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to defend. And we're always complaining how nobody defends anymore. Well, they did everything that, that, that was needed. They got, they got their head in the way. They got challenges in. They closed the ball. And I think the most important thing, though, was every single one in white, all 11 of them, worked for each other right. and did their bit defensively. And I, and I kind of go back to when, when last week Bruno got his got his yellow and was suspended. Mm -hmm. I was teetering, and I remember saying to Craig, is that good or bad for Liverpool? And of course, I guess at the time we thought, well, it's bad for Man United. But in the end, when I think about the, the performance from Manchester United today, it was probably the best thing that happened to them. Because every man, Jack, one of them, did the job defensively. And I, I don't believe you can say that Bruno Fernandes would have defended better than either McTominay, McNair, uh, or Amrabat, because one of them wouldn't have played if he had been available. Did you say McNew? McGoo. Uh, <laughs> McGoo. I know. It's I know. But didn't he... But well, listen to Dalot. Hmm? <laughs> listen to Dalot. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Oh, well, yeah. I just, I, if we're picking up on names, I just... Well, you just put a muck in, mate. He turned him Scottish. <laughs> You've got to give that young boy a lot of credit, though. No, he's definitely. He looked good, didn't he? He's played well coming in, and he's, he's got very little experience. I thought this was a big credit to Man United. They come, in, they come into Anfield in disarray, with injuries, players missing, out of form, bickering, all the things that you don't want. And Stevie's right. You know, the fact that they had their main playmaker out gave them a bit more solidity. And McTominay did a, a job getting between the middle of the park and, and supporting Hoyland up front. And I thought the back four uh, defended their penalty box really, really well. But Liverpool were poor. The first 15 minutes, you, 10 minutes, you're like, right, this is it. This is, they're, they're on top here. There's corner kick, there's a wave after wave. And you thought, but then United were able to sort of weather that. And then it sort of went a little flat. And if you think back to the game at Palace, Stevie, recently, uh, was it, I think it was last week. Yep. It took till Jordan Ayew was sent off for them to actually create anything. 70 minutes. Right? And, and they went on to win the game, but it was, it was certainly not convincing. And when you look at that performance today, with all the possession that they had, yeah, United defended deep, but they really ran out of ideas. I yeah. mean, Nunes, Nunes is going... There's a lot to like about him, but he's got the Alvaro Maratas about him. He's, he's, he's understanding of when to be on the shoulder and playing the offside. He gets caught offside a lot, mm. an awful lot. And add that to his lack of prowess as a finisher and consistency, that's a bit of a problem. But I just felt this was Liverpool's game to go and take with the scruff of the neck. But Man United, I thought, bearing in mind where they are at the moment, I thought they did a brilliant job just... and. and as you said, had the best chance of the game. Unfortunately, Hoyland's not got a Premier League goal. Yeah. And it shows. He's, 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 he's nervous. He's, he's like rushing it in the, the, when he gets in that key area. And if he doesn't change that, he, he won't score goals on a regular basis. But boy, oh boy, this is a big result for them, for Man United, because everybody thought they were going to get trounced by four or five. What was wrong in the final third today, Stevie? Just very predictable. Nothing out of the ordinary, no imagination. I mean... To, to, to Craig's point, who knows? I mean, Man United, I think, were about 15 yards from the goal line and he managed to get himself offside then as well. And I kind of, when I saw that, I thought, oh, it's going to be one of these, certainly for him. But just in general, there was no imagination in the play. Listen, from, from back middle to getting to the, the final third, yeah. I mean, they were completely and totally in, in control. But after that, predictable. You know, we talk about Anthony coming on his left. Salah was doing that all day as well. Luis Diaz was trying to drop the shoulder and come inside on your mate Dalot and kept losing the ball. And as Craig said, Nunes, 
you know, he does prefer it when there is some space in behind, which there wasn't because Man United was so deep. So, look, at the end of the day, when you've had so much of the ball and you get to the final throw, as many times and as regularly in the 90 minutes as Liverpool did, there's a reason you pay Salah, Nunes and Diaz the big money. And that's to produce. Mm. And it's OK to say, well, they were deep and they, they had men behind the ball, but you don't get... You don't get paid and the expectation of winning the Premier League or the Champions League, that sort of excuse doesn't, doesn't really get you a pass. You didn't produce when it mattered most and you have to say that and be honest about it. When you're looking at a couple of games when we could maybe argue or debate that Sabozla has been their best player this year, right? And he's had a two or three really quiet games. Mm -hmm. He was poor, he, not poor, he was quiet at Crystal Palace. And even today, his passing and was just a little bit off and the timing of his pass and his runs. And, and I think when that's happening, uh, that put it one way, I don't, I don't look at that Liverpool midfield three, certainly not this three, and I know it's not the best three. I don't think this is going to carry them to the title. I mean, I know they've got players to come back in, but that, that three in particular as a, as, as a three ball in there, I, I, I don't think that's going to work for them. You, when I've asked you in the past, who is more likely to catch City? You said Liverpool over Arsenal. Does this sort of performance change that? Well, yeah, because they're going to be coming up against, on a regular basis, defences that, that will try and do what United do. And, and you have to be able to break them down. And they've shown in this game that they couldn't do it. But again, I'll go back to my main point, where I think Liverpool's biggest problem will be is defensively they give up opportunities. You know, to have... I mean, I think the stats said Liverpool had 70% of the ball. It felt like 80 or 90. But the fact is, if Hoyland has got some composure mm. and figures it out, Man United take three points from this game. And that's, again, that's just the honest truth. So, so the fact that they couldn't break them down, the fact that they are still giving opportunities away means that, for me, probably Arsenal edge Liverpool and City. i tell you what, though. Give him a lot of stick and a few of those players. And I think deservedly the United players, that is. He annoys the hell out of me, Anthony, and one or two others with their attitude and their, their sort of the way they swan around. He's missed a nice these but days. But I tell you what, <laughs> fair play to him, though. He's, he could not... Any of those guys, Garnacho, who's a youngster, he's going to work hard. All these guys, are, even Anthony, working back... All right, final third going forward in the second half. I think he picked the wrong ball a couple of times, like Stevie said. Right. Otherwise, Liverpool could have been in more trouble. But he, he worked hard for the team. He got back, he made tackles, he had good shape about him. All those things we were not saying. Some of these guys were swanning around. And if we're, if we're thinking about the stories that floated around and were floating around about, about Ten Hag's lost the dressing room, he certainly hadn't lost that 11 today. Mm. But he had two centre-halves who are, I think John Champion in commentary said, I think 199 caps between them, he had two centre-halves that know how to defend. Yeah. Not going to run away for anybody. And if you're going to try and play a high line, then Johnny Evans is screwed. But they weren't never going to play that game at Anfield. They were going to sit in the edge of the box. And Varane, who has been out the team for whatever reason, I can't answer that question, him and Evans defended crosses and defended and blocked extremely well. But getting Luke Shaw back in recent weeks as well has been huge for him. The key for Ten Hag is to keep this lot at the standard of attitude that they showed against Liverpool. And if they do that, then they've got enough ability where they will win more games and may get themselves up the table. But the problem is, if you play for one of the big guys, it's not about having a good attitude away at Liverpool or home at Liverpool or at Man City. Those, those are games that should be a given. Because mm. if, you, if you're not up it's for a game like Bournemouth. that, it's, it's home or away against Bournemouth or Brighton or Crystal Palace or whoever it is. That's when you have to show that type of attitude. Because if you do that, because you have the extra talent, that will get you points. That's what he's got to do now. Take this into the next lot of games. But I, I also, Stevie, I just don't think it's... I, well, attitude's a big thing, right? Mm. But I also think one of the problems this current crop of United players has is when they do open up, against even mediocre teams, they're getting caught. Yeah. They're getting played around. Now, today, it was slightly easier because nobody was expecting them to go to Anfield and go to toe-for-toe. To -toe. So that pressure was gone. They knew that they could go there 
play a defensive game and we're not going to be criticised for doing so. They can't do that against the majority in the Premier League. And when they have opened themselves up uh, and, and tried to boss games, they've been caught out. So we'll see how he goes forward with that. But it's, it's a big day for Ten Hag because 7-0 last time out, 4-0 yep. the time before, this could have been messy for him. He, he, if he said he wasn't worried about it all weekend, <laughs> he was lying.